Hey everyone, Imran Web Squadron. I am late today. I'm not really late. I kind of told most of you I had other commitments. It was actually a chiropractor appointment for my back. Yes, my back is still sore. It feels a little bit better after I've just been pulverized by the chiropractor. So hopefully, I would like to think by tomorrow I'm fully recovered, okay, but my back does feel sore. It was quite funny. We we spent quite a bit of time as she was doing the treatment, talking about her website, an issue she's having with her website. And I'll talk more about that when I know we've got more people joining on the chat. The minute I think I'm talking to myself. But hey, I hope you're okay. Um, obviously, Elemental 3.9 came out yesterday with the Loop Builder for WooCommerce. You could also save your settings for your elements, which I think is a pretty good idea if you've watched a video. It now means that you can create a setting for your element. And whenever you drag that element in now, it has that setting, which I think is really, really good for headings, subheaders, text editors, um, accordions, anything like that. I think that is a really smart move. I haven't tested it out fully, fully yet in terms of um, what if you add CSS coding? Would it still apply it? Hmm. And I'm wondering about that. So I might test it out on the live today, actually. We might do that on the live. Hey, Peter. Been been at the chiropractor, you know, massaging and maneuvering my back and all of that. Luckily, though, I had the pop. If anyone here goes to a chiropractor, a physiotherapist for your back problems, when you hear the pop sound, which is where the fluid um, releases in your spine. That means you're now on the way to recovery. Hey, Peter, exactly 100% like. Most likely, I don't think we're going to get a lot of people join in today. Whenever I go live late, Peter, um, it, it kind of isn't as um, busy as it is. Um, but yeah, so I'm hoping my back gets better. But yeah, um, yesterday, I mean, it, it kind of caught me out of the blue, the whole, hey, Aljamaz, the whole Elemental uh, 3.9, I can't even open my bottle. The Elemental 3.9 update with the WooCommerce Loot Builder caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting that so soon. So I'm quite impressed. Elemental 3.8 gave us the Loot Builder. Elemental 3.9 Beta now gives us the WooCommerce. It also allows us to do some extra pop-up settings. We can now also display our settings um, as a default as well, which I think is really, really good. Now, I've just got to very quickly check my emails while you're all flooding into the system here, because obviously I've been away from my desk for about one hour. Um, but yeah, it was it was interesting because I was talking to my, car, my chiropractor about her website. What was funny was there was a client before me and the client, and they were talking about the email, and she mentioned GoDaddy, and as soon as she said that, my ears just pricked up. So we've had a good conversation about that. So right, I've just got to check some details over here as well. Uh, yeah, by the way, though, how, how is everyone and what are you all up to? Yeah, nice one, Peter. Yeah, I mean, um, I think the bricks, temp I think the templates for bricks are quite light at the moment. There is nothing, I wouldn't say there's anything, um, um, just get the lighting on here. I don't think there's anything groundbreaking coming out yet. And I think that's going to take time before we start to see, um, I don't know, um, more meatier templates coming out. But I think it's a starter. Yeah, exactly, Peter. As soon as they mentioned GoDaddy, I was like, Ugh, like that. Hey, Michael D. Hey, Jason. Hope you're all okay. How you all doing? How are you all doing? 
just quickly deleting a few things here. Just had a, an email from Google as well about how uh, uh, universal um, uh, analytics will be ending soon. So you need to make sure you set up Google Analytics 4. I probably will do a video on that because I'm pretty sure there's going to be loads of people who have universal analytics and have not set up GA4. So I'll probably will do a video of that. Hey, Pavel. Yeah, exactly. I think the Wall of Fame was really good, wasn't it, Pavel? I think that was, uh, not Pavel, Peter. I think that was nice. So if you were to go and create five templates or whatever, I think that's nice as a bit of like um, accountability and also getting your name out there and appreciation for what you do as well. I think that's pretty, pretty good. Um, yeah, my back is a lot better. It feels better. I'm feeling more mobile. Um, hey, Darren, hope you're all right. So, Pavel, please remind me how to set the visibility conditions for the header to be hidden on a specific page. Okay, Pavel, when you're on a header, okay, in, in fact, uh, what we'll do is uh, I'm just going to shut down my email. Let's open up a page. It's always good if I do this on a live page, if I'm honest. Do, 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 do. So let's just, um, let me just go to one of my test websites. Okay, it's easier like that, Pavel, than me just show, saying it. Would you agree? <sighs> Sorry, that was a bit of a deep sigh there. Come on, come on, come on, load up, load up, load up. Right, let me just get this open on my page over here. Just need to change my screen. Hopefully nothing breaks as I do that. Okay, cool, right. Let's just go over to uh, templates, right? Okay, let me just share this with you. Right, okay, so hopefully you can all see the screen. Let me just pull over a header template. Oh, you mean in bricks, Pavel? You want to see it in bricks? Okay, in fact, I'm gonna leave this page open and we'll go with a uh, staging 14. So let's just go to one of our bricks pages. Let's log into there. Boop, 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 boop. Right, okay, so. This is what you do, mate, okay? You go over to Bricks, you go to Templates. Okay, so this is uh, for Pavel, who's asking for Bricks headers, right? Over here, I have my header template. I'm now gonna edit this with Bricks, okay? So this is a Bricks template, right? In Bricks. Hey, Taho Kangas, AMR Hussein. Um, hold on a moment, I'll come back to your AMR. Now over here, can you see the cog for settings, Pavel? Make sure you're watching this, okay? You click that. Down here, you then have template settings. In template settings, you have conditions. In conditions, this is where you set it. So you would now say, is this the entire website or is it only going to be, uh, well, there you go, right? Is it only going to be uh, an individual page or whatever, okay? You can also exclude as well. So this is where you would go to do that. Right, um, I am gonna try something out on here though, by the way, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute in the video. Um, so AMR Hussein, how can I get good customers with good amount, most of people looking for cheap prices? Right, so the answer to that, okay, AMR Hussein, does depend a lot on who is your target audience, how are you currently getting clients, and um, how are you currently pricing it? What kind of feedback are you getting? Um, are you going above and beyond? Are you using a pricing ladder or a pricing scale? And what I would recommend you do, and I know you probably won't do it, is you need to go and look at that mastery module of how to get clients. The prices are going up, by the way, at the end of November. I better let everybody know that. The prices at the end of November after Black Friday are going up. I'm telling you now. Um, so Black Friday, we will offer a 40% discount. And after that, the prices go up. 
So we're going to give you a bit of a, a, a wonderful discount and then they go up. Mainly because uh, we've had comments and people saying we have got them priced way too low and all that. I hope that helped, Pavel. Okay. I hope that helped. Right. What The reason why I'm um, on this slider page is this slider has a bit of custom CSS applied to it, right? So if I was to now go to this slider, and this is using Elemental 3.9 now, by the way. Hey, Francisco, how are you? This is Elemental 9, 3.9 uh, beta. If I right click this and I select set as default, that is now set as default. If I now go here and I go and find a slide and I drop the slide in here, look at that. The slide has remembered Oh no, has it remembered though? Let me just go in here. Has it remembered it? If I go into this slide, advanced, go to, cause no, it's not. I lie. I go back on my word. The only reason it's done that is because this over here, if I was to give this a class name and call it slider like that, call it slider. If I go here and I now put a dot slider, right? It's not remembered the style. Now that's interesting. So Elemental have brought something out now where if you change the color, it should remember it. And surprisingly, it does not work on the slide. So this is interesting. This is actually really, really interesting. Set that as default. If I now bring over slides, right? I know it has. That's weird. Did I not set it? Do you know what I didn't do? I know what I didn't do. I didn't refresh the page. Didn't refresh the page. Uh, can you make an offset card slider, Holland? When you say offset card slider, though, can you just clarify that a bit more, Holland? Can you clarify that a bit more when you say that? So if I now drop this slide in, say, here, does this bring through the CSS code? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay, so that is definitely working. So this set as default, and, and here's where I think the set as default is a pretty, pretty good thing. Yeah, exactly, John. I mean, I was about to go all like nuclear on this, John. Like, why is it not working? And I do think that this is a pretty neat feature. Let me show you now. If I was to go and add in, say, an image box, right? In fact, no. Reset style. Let me reset the style. Let me, uh, let me go and get my image box again. Image box. That's interesting. You're probably wondering what am I doing? I'm just basically messing around with setters default settings here with Elemental. Come on, speed up, right? Let's just drop in an image box now. Let's just pop in an image. Let's just go over this image here, right? Okay, so if you were now to set the style of your, hey Maddie, um, oh yeah, by the way, Maddie, I was meant to reply to you. Um, Getting it to dynamically pick up the text per category is very, very, very almost impossible without someone writing some funky code. So this is where you might now need to go back to having a separate category page, which is a pain if I'm really, really honest. I think that's a painful way to do things if I'm really honest. Do you know what, Peter? I nearly was. I nearly was. I felt like, have I been duped? Have I now been duped? Um, do you get what I mean? Right, if we go over here to the style and I set the border radius for this image to be uh, a thousand like that, okay? And we set the size of this to be uh, the image. Um, I don't know. Let's just go with something like that. And now I set this to have some padding of, uh, let's just go with 30 and we'll give it a border radius as well. 
Where's the border rate? Not the border radius. The border type will go with a uh, something uh, solid. No, not the image. I want to do the box. Where's the box gone? Do you know what? I'm losing my brain here with image box. I've forgotten how you do it. Where's the box gone? Is it on here? The border here. Here we go. Yeah, border. Uh, solid. No, it's not that. Why am I not doing this right? That's for the image. That's for the hover. That was for the content. Where was it? Oh, it's because I'm using containers. Yep, yeah, sorry. Hey, Jake, how you doing? Hope you're all okay. Right. So if you were to go and set in a particular size and style and all of that, and you hit update, and then you kind of set this to be your default. Uh, my back has been um, massaged, and it is a little bit better now, Maddie. Thanks for asking. Um, it's... It's better. You know, it's not perfect, but it is. Uh, just turn that light off because I noticed it was rebounding quite a bit. Um, it's so much, much, much better now. So if I was to now go in and drag in another image box, let's just make this be a row, by the way, because it's always good like that. If I was to now drop in another image box like this, right, the image box now maintains the size, the setting. So if I go and pop this image in now, you get the round image. Yeah, do you know what, Maddie? I do need to look into it a bit deeper. And I will have a I will get back if I find uh, another funky, easy way to do it. The trouble with categories is, you know, could you add a custom field to the category? And that needs takes a bit of thinking. But anyway, yeah, um, so, boop, yeah. So I do, I do need to have a bit of a think about um, what else can be done to get that category name to come through. Hey, Jake, everyone gets breakdance videos now. Breakdance are all over the place, right? They are flooding the market with their adverts. They're really going all out with their promotion scheme. And I don't know if that's because they're struggling or they're trying to get more business. I don't know what, you know, often one good strategy is when you make some income, you take a massive chunk of that and you put it into promoting promotion. That's a strategy that can work well for some people. It doesn't always work. You've got to have a bit of interest in the market, but it can really, really help you out. Yeah, Holland, I saw in Webflow a lot of beautiful offset sliders that the card slider is out of the picture when you slide. Um, I'm trying to think of an example. I'm trying to think of an example, Holland. Um, card slider that is out of the picture. Oh, you mean where this, you mean where the, um, you mean where the, um, how to explain this? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. You mean where the image is outside. I'm trying to think now, if you were going to do that as a slider, um, I'm trying to think here. I'm trying to think of an example of how you could do that with Elemental. You could do it with bricks. Maddie, everything is a challenge. If you're going to do a slider with an offset image, um, I need to have a think about that. I need to have a think about that. I need to have a think about that one, actually. That one's going to take a bit of a thinking. I don't, probably won't solve it today, Holland, but I will have a think. Yeah, well done, Jake. You're absolutely right. Tomorrow, the prices go up. I think there's a chance tomorrow as well. Or does it close tonight? So, Bricks, if you haven't got the 199 lifetime deal, you are going to regret it. You know what I love is sometimes when people see LTD, they sort of go limited I go, yeah, it is limited, but it's lifetime deal, right? It's not 199 limited, it's 199 lifetime deal. So if you want it, go and get it. Um, but yeah, Holland, I'm going to have a think about that with how would you do it so that the image was kind of um, outside. Because in bricks, you could do that, you see, with a, um, a nestable slider. Um, but I'm trying to think here with, could you use a... Hey, Mark, 
could you use a template? Could you use a temp? Yeah, I think you could actually. I think you could. Right. So let me show you what you could do. Right. Uh, this is what you could do. Let me just get this on a. I'm building this on the fly now, and I might get this wrong. Okay. I might get this horribly, horribly wrong. Right. Um, let's go to templates. Go to save templates. Let's just create add new. And I'm gonna. This will be a section, and I'm gonna call it a slider. No, 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 we won't call it slider. We'll call it offset one. Just so I know which one it is, because this website is full of stuff that I build and whatnots, right? Um, let's go for... No, hold on. This is where it gets slightly tricky, because you want... This is where it gets slightly tricky, right? Um... Right, I'm going to try something here, yeah, and this might not work, okay? This might not work. So I'm just going to go in, and I'm just going to pick two columns, right? I'm going to drop in a image in over here, and we'll just make this image be one of these images that I've got. I don't know, let's go for... Let's go for this image in over here, right? And then I'm going to go for uh, text, and we'll put in, uh, I don't know, some text editor as well. We'll pop that in there, like that. We'll make this all be, uh, we'll make the container be in the middle like that. In fact, I'm going to make this image be a little bit smaller, something, I don't know. I'm just making this up now. Let me give this a background color. Sorry, style, background color. Let's go for, uh, hmm, let's go with black, right? Let's make this be white. I'm doing this on the fly, okay? I'm just making this up now as I go along. We're trying to do an offset slider. Yeah, slider with cards. Yeah, Maddie, what I would say, yeah, is you got to look at what do you get as a benefit out of Rank Math Pro, and do you really need it? Do you really, really need it? So you got to really have a hard think about, do you really need it? Don't be tempted to buy everything that you get offered. Right, because uh, that isn't always a good, good thing. Right, top, we're going to go 100 there. We'll go with 100 there. In fact, I'm going to go with 100 all the way around. We'll do something like that. In fact, we won't do that. We will go with a 60, 60 like that. Uh, we'll go with something like that. The image, I'm going to add in an animation. So I'm going to go with the motion effect, and I'm going to say entrance animation is uh, fade in up. Fade in up. Something like that. I don't know. Right, okay. Let's just go with something like that. Okay. Um, let's hit publish on that. I'm not sure if this is a really good example I'm doing here right now. Yeah, um, so what Jason says, right, I had Rank Math Pro. Was it really needed? In all honesty... No. In all honesty, no. And um, I, I'm just not sure about, like, what was the major, major, major benefit out of it for me, if I'm really, really honest. Um, which is why I, I'm not using it. Right. Um, where are we? Where are we? Uh, templates. Save templates. Let's get that offset code, which is that one. Let's go back over here to our slider. Let's get rid of that, load that, slider one, we'll have the content, get rid of that, get rid of that, pop that code in, get rid of that button over there. Right, so stay with me on this, okay? Stay with me at the moment. Let's hit update. Let's just preview this. Oh, hold on, why did that? Oh, of course, yes. Sorry. Um, let me just go over to my slider options. There is no slide up. Uh, the transition is slide like that, left, right. Let me just preview that again. So just stay with me on this. So there's your slide one. Okay. So if I was to now duplicate this, which is a bit of a ridiculous thing because I'm just duplicating it, right? If I now go to my CSS over here, let me just make this, let me get rid of... Uh, 
Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Hold on a moment. Hold on a moment. I've, I've gone and messed up where my slider sits. Right. So there's my dot at the moment. I need these to be higher up. So I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm going to go with the mark bottom of... I'm going to go with the bottom of 50... No, I'm going to go with the bottom of 100. This might not work to what I'm doing yet. And I know this might not be what you want either, Holland, but I'm just playing around with this at the moment, right? So if I now preview this... Yeah, look, it's not the right, is it? Let me just change the color. Let's go with... Uh, let's go with 80, right? Let's go with 80. Let's just change the color for the slider option, the style, the navigation. The dots need to be... Uh, no, we'll go, with a, we'll go with a lighter gray like that. Let's update that. Right. So you see here, can you see what I've got here? I've got a template, right? And when I click it, can you see what it's doing? So when you go to slide two, when you go to slide three, can you see that? Oh, it only plays it once. That's a bit annoying, isn't it? I wanted it to keep sliding it. That's a little bit annoying, isn't it? Uh, we'll go with fade then instead. Let's just update that. Uh, in fact, I'm going to make it quicker. All right. I'm going to make it quicker just so that we can actually see what it does. So if we now just hit refresh there now, that should change and go to the next dot. However, the animation's not playing, which is a bit annoying. I'm a bit surprised it's not playing the animation. Maybe I have to do four seconds. I don't know. Why is it not doing that? Transition speed. Nah. Anyway, sorry. I was just playing around with offsets and something like that. Um, Rank Math does give you a lot more... Um, I mean, um, Rank Math Pro does give you extra stuff like content AI. It does give you more... Um, um, uh, what's the word? Help with some of your headlines and stuff like that. But is it really needed... I personally think Rank Math 3 is absolutely fine. Yeah, I mean, what I would say, Maddie, right, you know the content AI, you know something I will say to you? Um, once you've used it once, you learn what to use, and then you realise, actually, um, was it really needed? Hey, Brian, how are you? Yeah, exactly, Mohammed, and that's one thing I don't like. I don't like how, before I was getting 100%, now my score is not always going to be 100% because of the whole content thing. Yeah, so this is a little bit annoying how the, you know, like when you move between slides, it's not playing that animation, and I don't know why it's not playing. The, I mean, it does it the first time. I'm not sure why it's not doing that. Anyway... Let's go back to full screen because I was messing around there and I thought I cracked it. I didn't really crack it at all. Hey, Stacy, how are you doing? And Stacy, hope you like the video I put out uh, today, which was section columns and containers on the back of our conversations and about how you could still use, um, you can use section and columns and containers on the same page and the same website and it won't break anything and you can get away with it. I'm feeling a little bit better Brian, thank you very much. Just been to a chiropractor, had my back needed a little bit. Um, so yeah, could be Mohammed. To be honest though, Mohammed, um, this website that I was doing it on right now was uh, Elemental Beta. It's got the beta version of Pro and Free. So it could be because I'm not using, I'm using a beta version. But I do think it's an interesting way of... Um, I do wonder though if it's the trans, I don't know why, I think it's maybe the speed of how I set the transition up, maybe, uh, maybe, I don't know. Let's just try that again. Let's just, well, I'm just watching my screen to see if it changes on its own. Oh, it is working now. Is it working? 
No, I think there's a bug. I think there's a bug with Elementor. I am using the beta version, by the way. Hey, Greg, how are you? Um, yeah, exactly, Jake. And I think the thing about rank math is I like to be aiming for 90 and above percent. I like to aim for the high 90s. That's just the way I am. And it's great as a marker. But I say to everyone... If you go to your website and your content AI score is um, your content AI, no, your content AI is red or across, ignore it. Just totally ignore it, right? Who cares? Just get over it. Seriously, don't worry about it. I've just got to move this over here because I've got to do something for someone later on. Hey, Carapos, long time no see. How are you doing? Yeah, you're absolutely right, Ty, here. That's usually the best way to kind of like check things. Or what you can do is regenerate your CSS. Do you know what I mean? The, the best tip I always give everyone is regenerate your files and your data, log out and log back in. It is Thursday today. I mean, how's your week going, everyone? Um, it's been quite a busy week. Um, we should have one client finalizing next week. Potentially another client, hopefully, and um... oh yeah, I need to tell you all about something. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, so my chiropractor, while she was doing my back, we were talking about her website, and she's with GoDaddy, and her emails are with GoDaddy as well, and she has a problem with her emails, and I said to her, "You got to get." go daddy to check your text records and she said they've said they've checked it but some emails go through and some don't and i've just said right you've got to you've really got to get them to just double check your text your spf and all of that hey any if if you're watching right now and you're not hitting like please don't be afraid to say why why are you not hitting like is it because, like, our style, our approach, you just don't like it? Or what? Or you're just here spying? If you're spying, let us know you're spying. <laughs> exactly, Brian. And I did say to her that... Um, so what it is, is she's got two websites. One of her websites is Squarespace. Her other website is uh, with GoDaddy. And what I've advised her is build it in WordPress so you're now not stuck with Squarespace and and the website is built with GoDaddy page builder as well so it gets worse not only is she with GoDaddy and the email and domain are with GoDaddy she's used the GoDaddy page builder I mean how it can't get worse can it right I mean I, I was I was even offering like look would you like me to just help you out with your website for free because you know she always helps me out with my back even though I pay her but but, but you know, she's stuck with GoDaddy, the way she's built it and everything. And I said, you really want to get your website onto WordPress. Um, hey, Mel, um, I have had... Um, absolutely, Jason, that's what I said to her. I said that to her. Yeah, uh, uh, Brian, the GoDaddy page builder. You know, it's like... And then I had a look at her website again. I was looking at it on Tuesday when I booked the appointment. And I did notice, I thought... How is she, what has she used to build this? It's all over the place. My back is a lot built better, Mel. The chiropractor's done some good magic on it. It's going to take a bit of time to fully recover. We just got to see how it goes, right? Um, use air quotes when you say page builder. Air qu yeah, page builder. Very good. You, just then I was like, this Brian air quotes? What is he talking about? Yeah, page builder. When we say go daddy, right? Um, so yeah, her emails aren't going through all the way properly. And I just said to her that you really need to build your website with a different server, you know, because, because GoDaddy and Bluehost and 123Reg all do a very similar thing. Hey, Eddie, hope you're all right. If you have a domain with them, when they do the email, the email is through the Microsoft service or however they set it up. I can't remember. So when there's a problem, you got the domain and your hosting, then you got your email going through the Microsoft server before you get to your website. So there's like there's 
too many third parties involved. No, Eddie, I've I started late, Eddie. I've started late today, Eddie. Um I I in fact I think I started third how when did I start? I actually started 34 minutes ago. I was at my chiropractor, so you know, um I was having my back corrected <laughs> as it is. Hey, yeah, take care, Peter. Thanks so much for being the first one here. The first one to hit like, the first one to comment, and the first one to ditch us and run off. Shame on you, Peter. Take care of yourself, right, and look after yourself. But yeah, Elemental 3.9, the beta version, do not use it unless you have a staging website or a test website. But I am very, head yeah, shake, I, as if, I am very impressed so far with what you can do now with the WooCommerce Builder. Because we were always limited, weren't we, with posts and WooCommerce and Elementor. You had to use third-party plugins. Now you don't really need to do that. Exactly, Greg. The Microsoft Exchange sucks. It does suck. And that's the problem she's having, where some emails go out, are received. Some emails are not received or don't go out and bounce back. And I just said, damn, you know, damn, it's just not on. Yep. Um, okay, so Mel, sitting for much of the day can be problematic, now pickable. Yeah, I mean, I I normally do a lot of stuff. My problem, Mel, is my problem I've had for practically 20 years now, um, where I just have a problem with it. Yeah, I mean, um, the set, the saving as default, I think, is a really, really good thing, Eddie, because now you could create your button save it as a default, drop the button in, and it now has the settings. Now, some people will say, but what's different between that and global widget? The trouble with global widgets, if anyone's ever used that in Elementor, is um, if, you, if you set a global widget up for a button and then you dropped that widget in from the global widget and you wanted to change the color for one of the buttons, you had to unset it as a global widget. And it was a pain in the ass. It was a pain. Now, you can set a default look, drop in a button, and go, oh, you know what? I'm gonna change the color. Fine, just change the color. Your default stays as default. And I think that is super, super cool. And it's a, again shows whoever is pulling the strings now in Elemental, it's happening. And I don't want to say that me and Paul helped to kickstart it. I don't want to say that. But I do think that on the back of me and Paul, when they did the um, Elemental, was it 3.7? Was it Elemental 3.6 or 3.7? When we were very critical over the updates, we didn't like it. What the heck was all of this? What's going on? 3.8, we have the loop builder and the grid. And there were some other improvements. 3.9 beta version, it now works with WooCommerce. You can save as default settings. There's a few extra pop-up settings. There's lazy load. I'm not sure about the whole lazy load one, if I'm honest. You know, I don't like lazy loading because it can affect your first content full paint. Carapos, I, you didn't even have to write that. I knew you were going to say that. But I think from an elemental point of view, I think this is good to see them moving in the right direction. Um, and of course, the Flexbox beta version as well. Yeah, DKMI. Well, this is it. The trouble is, Greg, is that GoDaddy are kind of going, oh, well, you know, and I've said to her, you've got to get on them. You've got to get on them because you're using their domain, their hosting, their email service. You haven't brought it over. You didn't create it somewhere else and bring over. You're using their services. So get them to sort it out. I think that's a pretty good um, comment, though, Extreme Hip Hop. I do think that whatever Bricks and Breakdance do now is going to start to play in Elemental's head. In the past, whatever Visual Composer did, Elemental didn't care. Whatever Divi did, Elemental didn't care. Why would they? Because they were different. And I do think that, and by the way, I don't know this for a fact, and Elemental might not like me saying it, but I do think that whatever they do, they're going to want to do better or different, or more efficient. 
And I think, you know, um, you shouldn't always copy or imitate. You should do it your own way. But, you know, we can't deny that some of the stuff that Elemental are doing now, in some way, they should have been doing two years ago. They should have been doing this two years ago. Yeah, it's a bit cold in here. So these are just, um, these are just gloves, mate. These are just gloves, right? They're just gloves. But they come with these arm bits that you can roll up. They're from Amazon, right? They're, they're, they're from Amazon, right? <laughs> Spider-Man. Oh, Greg, you know what? Now, I don't want to go down. <laughs> Let's not go down the Google suite issue. She's not my client. I'm her client because she's my chiropractor. You know, you know, if she had offered, if she had said to me, hey, you don't need to pay. Can you help me out? That's different, but she's not my client, but I've advised her. It was funny. The appointment was 40 minutes long, you know, really sorting out my back. And we the 90% of the conversation was literally about her website and the email records and the SPF and blah, de, blah, de, blah. Do you know something, Michael D? I now recommend to my clients... If you want to get your domain and your email, go with Zoho. I now recommend to my clients, if you want your domain and your email, go to Zoho. Because your email you can get for free. You don't need to pay £5 a month. You can get it for free. Up to 5 gigabytes. It, it, oh, and 5 emails. Up to 5 emails for 5 gigabytes or something like that is free with Zoho. That's damn good. And Zoho has been around since, like, the beginning of the internet. Zoho has been around for, like, flipping ages since Netscape, I think, right? Netscape Navigator. So, you know, get your domain and your email there. You're sorted. Then get your hosting wherever you get your hosting, and away you go. Yeah, good competition is good news, I think. And I think Elemental needed that. And it's given them a bit of a kick and all of that. Do you know something, Jake? This is why I use SiteGround. This is why I, George, and so many people use SiteGround. Because the unlimited emails, right? I mean, you are restricted to five... No, hold on. Is it half a gig? Or half a gig? I can't remember. That. There is a... you, you, can, you can modify the sizes, but yeah... SiteGround email never, ever fails me, except last year when they had a problem with their server for uh, 24 hours. Um, yeah, $99. Uh, I think you're right. Yeah, um, I think you're right there. Mohammed, we mainly do a lot of social media management, and most people still use Gmail email. Yeah, do you know something, Mohammed? It's, it's, it is very, very common. And whenever I see businesses advertising, in fact... You know what I find really funny, everyone? I don't know why I say everyone, but this is what I find really funny. Um, there's a lot of sponsored adverts on Facebook where people are like this. Hey, I started with nothing and now I own a seven-figure business. Every year I make seven, you know, like a million pounds every year. I'm going to show you how. Contact me. And then they got a Gmail address and I sort of go... You got a seven million pound, you got a one million pound business, six figure, seven figure, whatever, and you've got a Gmail address. Like you got, a, you, they've got a website because obviously they have a massive landing page, don't they? This is where I was. This is what happened to me. My life was shit. I did this. I did that. Now I've got a Ferrari and a big mansion and blah 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 blah, and the contact form and buy this, buy that. But they're using a Gmail address. And you sort of go, well, you obviously haven't hired anyone to help you out properly with your marketing campaign, have you? Um, yeah, so, I mean, Zoho has been around, I'm pretty sure, in the days of Netscape Navigator. Right, now, Eddie, this is an interesting one. A lot of people say to me, right? Um, you should keep your domain and your email separate. I actually keep, do I don't mind domain and email being the same. I don't mind that because it's all in one place for that. I do, however, 
it, it depends, right? Okay, look, it really does depend. It really does depend, okay? Um, and I do agree with you, Greg. Gmail is reliable, so I do get why they have it. But I would say if you've got a business, you would have the email address there. Anyway, back to Eddie. If your web hosting provides a good, reliable email service, why wouldn't you use it? Go for it. However, GoDaddy and Bluehost do not provide a reliable email service. That is what I have found with clients. That is what I have found with speaking to my chiropractor today. So depending on who you're with, I would say, you know, have a think about using a different service, especially GoDaddy. Look, I'm, I don't like to knock them all the time, but it is true. Absolutely, Mohammed. Absolutely. They all have these lovely landing pages, right? Um, shall I tell you who's the worst one at the moment? And he's all over Facebook again. King Kong Company, King Kong Co. Cerberi, I think his name is. He loves to promote his services. And he's he's started rolling out tons of Facebook adverts. Bold head, you know, he usually does Facebook adverts with a chain store, right? And um, it's really, really funny. He says he's got this ebook. He's got this book, right? And it's an ebook, right? Or you get, it's a printed book, sorry, right? And he's giving it away for free. Giving it away for free. But you gotta pay for the shipping cost, which is $20. Hold on a moment. He's giving away a, I don't know, a hundred page book, right? Which is gonna be full of crap. For free. For free! But you gotta pay twenty dollars shipping costs. Well, it's not free, then, is it? You prat. It's not free. <laughs> but so many people fall into it, and I have read reviews, and some people have put it on his Facebook sponsored ads, and he doesn't reply to them. Once you sign up for that ebook, they 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 bombard you with mail. They bombard you like boom 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 boom. Right? They are up your ass. They are in your neck. They are in your ears. They are going to be tunneling into your belly button. They will pull out the fluff and they're in. Boom. Right? So just watch out for companies like that that just spin and they want to get you on a newsletter and then they bombard you to buy their stuff. Right, I'm just going to read the comment here from Sean. Google Apps Guy, but there's a backdoor way to use a free Gmail account as your domain name for free. Hey, Sean, you're going to have to share a few more details about that, my friend. You're going to have to tell us a bit more. You can't say that as the Google Apps guy and you don't tell us more. In fact, but then again, maybe you're, you've got to be careful what you share, right? But if you're willing to share, please tell us more. By the way, hey, Sinan. Uh, Eddie, I've heard of the name Hero email service. I've never used it, so I'm not too um, familiar with pros and cons of using it. Um, uh, Jake, he's in Melbourne. Yeah, King Kong Company. Yeah, that's the one. Digital agency. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, Jake, what else? I mean, like, he's really strong on his marketing. He gets interviewed a lot by media, news channels, whatever. But I do find that his marketing and his strategy is so fake. It is so like up your ass fake. Okay, Sean, when you say you used it for a client recently, was that your strategy where you still got a email? I mean, if you can share a bit more about that, by the way, um, what I would recommend you do, and you don't have to do this, Sean, um, but if you want to get yourself a lot of street cred, and I'm sure you do want to get yourself a lot of street cred, please do pop over um, to our Facebook page. Make sure you've signed up there. Please do pop over and you can share more details. Yeah, exactly, Mohammed. All of this stuff, right, this pyramid system, I hate it. All of them just buy into a scheme where they go, right, you've now bought in. You now need to sell so much to make so much money. And it, I really hate that kind of referral setup they do there. 
Yeah, Greg, I, do you know what? I was wondering if that is what the method was, but I was just trying to check, is there anything else maybe? And by the way, Greg, if you've got any steps exactly on how to do that, please feel free to pop that into our Facebook group for Web Squadron. I'm sure a load of people would thank you for doing that. Right, Zoom call, Eddie. Thank you for giving us your two-minute warning. <laughs> See you tomorrow, Eddie. Yeah, so um, this Subri guy, yesterday I noted he's hitting Facebook hard with promotional posts at the moment. Him and Breakdance, they're like that at the minute, aren't they? You know, yeah, great, Greg. Thank you so much for doing that. And Sean, you know, if you want to share anything as well, or maybe keep a lookout for what Greg does or the other way around, it's great if we can share extra useful info back to our community. Who here has tried out Elemental 3.9? Who here has tried out Elemental 3.9? Are you excited about the fact that we now will have the ability to create our own loop builder with WooCommerce? Who here is excited about that? How many of you are using Woolimentor, Woolimentor, or Shop Engine, or lots of other tools that potentially we could reduce? Now, I still think, though, Elementor do need to do something. If you're watching Elementor, this is to you. Give us a product filter. In fact, there's two things I really would love to see. Give us a really cool blog filter that you can do via categories or whatever, or the date something was loaded or the author. Give us something like that and give us a WooCommerce product filter. Oh, re yeah, Carapos, what do you, do you know, what do you think we're going to get in this big release, Carapos? What do you think we're going to get? Yeah, nice one, Sinan. Have a play with it, right? Um, I think the, uh, the loop builder is a step forward in the right direction, but I definitely feel like two things, right? We've got the loop builder, great. Now take it and give us filters for blogs, posts, and product filters for WooCommerce. Don't just do category. Allow us to bring through variations and attributes and stuff like that. Give us that. You do that. You do that, right? And people will like it. I'm telling you now, people will like it. Who would like it? Carapos won't like it. I know that. And I, I like your thinking, Carapos, possibly three uh, CSS grid. But come on, if Elementor, by the time we get to Elementor 3.10 or whatever, or version 4, if they can bring out a post filter, a proper filtering system, an Ajax filtering system, whatever, and an Ajax WooCommerce product filtering system, who here is down with that? Give me a hell yeah if you're down with that. I want to see a hell yeah. Give me a hell yeah if you're down for better filtering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Sinan, I would like it. Of course we would. Don't forget to hit like. Yep, absolutely. Yep, Sinan, all of these stuff. And I think if they do that, and that now means I don't need Ellie Custom Skin, gone. I don't need Shop Engine, gone. I don't need um, uh, Femify product filter, gone. Blog filtering system, I do loads of work to go and set that up or get a plugin. Gone. You can start to take away four plugins because it's now in house. People will be happy, right? Hell yeah, right? People will be damn flipping happy. Because what you got to remember is the bulk of the websites we build are not Skynets. They're not, you know, they're not hunky-dory cyberpunk machines, right? No, they're just like brochure websites or a shopping website. And nine times out of 10, you are trying to get the website to have a good looking product filter system. Oh, we got a website with blogs. Oh, now we've got to put up good blog filtering system. The loop builder takes us from here to here with what we can now do with Elemental Posts and WooCommerce. We're now going to go like that. Boom. Brilliant. But we get the filtering for the post and the WooCommerce there as well. 
right? We're all going to be a little bit happy. We'll all be a little bit happy. Uh, just checking the comments because I haven't been reading them all. Uh, I mean, yeah, Barry, I mean, you are right. Too little, too late. But I would say for anyone still using Elementor now, it'll be a great step in the right direction. By the way, there is a brand new plugin coming out tomorrow. The creator contacted me. No one even knows about this. That I'm going to test out later today. And I might do a video on it and I might have a special code for everyone. It's not an affiliate. There's no affiliate, right? There's no affiliate, but there's a code in there where you can get a 50% discount. I'm not going to talk any more about it because I still need to test it out. I don't want to tell you about it unless I'm like, does this really do what it does? It's for the BRICS community. And I think it's useful for some people. For people like me, Maybe, maybe not, but for some people, it's going to be really, really useful, and I will hopefully tell you more about that tomorrow. Tomorrow. Right, let me check the comments. Uh, I mean, what I would say, Mohammed, though, is you don't really need to have a separate page for the mobile. You can think very carefully about your images. WebP, you might have a different sized image for the mobile. So add your image twice to the media library. We've done videos on this. Go and watch our mobile responsive videos from our YouTube channel, right? Go watch that. Um, so you can you can do stuff without having to have a separate page. Sorry, uh, just reading it. Yeah, Crocoblock does have a good filter system, but the trouble is though, you gotta go and buy Crocoblock. Okay, just looking at what Lucas says. He's been building some websites using Elementor Pro, dynamic content, imported it. Right. Um. I do you know what Luke? I I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't. Maybe it's luck. Maybe it works. I mean, I don't normally do that, Luke. But if it's working for you, I can't argue with that. No, it's not Figma, mate. It's not. It's not Figma. Am I? Sorry, oh, do you mean, am I planning any design and elemental videos? Um, if I'm honest, WP Tuts is handling all of that at the moment with Figma and Elemental and Figma and Bricks and stuff. So I feel like that's his territory to do that. And I feel like um, I don't really use Figma. So what I don't want to do is do a Figma Elemental video because I don't really use Figma. So I don't want to come across as, look, this is what you do and this is how you do it because I don't really use it. Um, Vishwas, yes, you can use pods. You can use pods, okay? You can, you, you can use it. You can, you can use pods. I've done videos on it, but by the way, Vishwas, you don't need to keep pasting, okay? Um, you don't need to keep pasting, but yes, you can use it. I did a video, I go watch my video with Elementor pods. I did a video on it. That shows you the settings, how you want to use it, how you can be a bit methodical with your build. So Mohammed says you can't add two images to blog posts. Actually, Mohammed, you can in a way. You can. If you've got a post and you have a custom field called image two or image three or image four or anything like that, when you build your blog post, Loop Builder, you can add in another image. In fact, that's given me an idea for a video. That's given me an idea for a video. So loop image two, image two. There we go. That's given me an idea for a video. Thank you very much. That's why, that's the only reason I do these live chats so that you guys give me videos. Um, Vishvas, can you do it without Elemental Pro? Uh, yes, you can. But then Vishvas, the question I have to you is, why are you not using Elemental Pro? Why are you not using Elemental Pro? Hey, Jimmy. Why are you not using Elemental Pro, Vishvas? Everything else you say is irrelevant. Why are you not using Elemental Pro? Don't rely on third-party plugins all the time. It will hit you and hurt you, okay? Uh, does um, Elemental have CSS transitions translate? Uh, yeah, if you drop it in, 
if you drop it into your CSS code, you can use transitions and translate. So Gene, you need to populate an online A4 PDF with data da -da -da -da, and print on A4. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I'm not sure, Gene. You might, I think you might need someone to write something in your SQL to pull out the data. Yeah, but Vishvas, is this for you or for your client? So Vishvas, is the element, is the website for you or a client? If it's for your client, why are they not paying? If it's for you, what is the value of the website? Because if the value of the website is important, pay up and get it. If it's for your client, they must pay to get it. It's like your client saying to you, I want a hotel, but I'm not going to pay for it to be built. What, you're going to build it for free for them? The bricks? No, they got to pay for the bricks, right? You don't just get the bricks and build it. No, they got to get the bricks and the concrete. If it's for you, right, and it's valuable, why are you not investing in it, right? Why are you not investing in it? You want an extension for your house. You can either do it really cheap with sticks or you can go and buy bricks. So think about that. But Vishvas, this is where you have to say to your client right now, how important is that website to your client? This is a serious question. If it's not important, fine. Use Elemental Free. Use five other plugins. When there's an incompatibility issue or conflict or deprecation, depreciated, sorry, or one of them stops working or goes bust or whatever, the client will expect you to fix it. And you probably won't get any more money. There'll be no extra money, right? Or do you say to your client, you want this, you've got to pay for it. And if you don't want it, fine, make it clear to them. You don't want it, fine. I will now use these extra plugins, but at any point, if your website breaks, you're gonna to have to pay me to fix it. Don't do it for free, otherwise you're forever fixing things. They've got to pay you for it, right? And you could get a GPL copy of a plugin. You could go and get one, you, you could. If you search the web long enough, you can find all sorts, right? But then you're harming your reputation. You're harming your reputation. And what you don't want to become known as, oh yeah, he's the web designer who can do it with Elemental Free. You want to become the web designer who can get the best out of Elemental Pro. Well, that's what you want to go. Because if you always service the, the low budget market, you are always going to be doing the low budget market. Lots of work, little profit, not a lot. You know, the amount of time you spend, your profit, it's not really worth it. You want to be going in and go, no, you've got to pay for it, right? It's like saying, look, I, you, you, your client comes to you with a car. I want a convertible, but they're not going to pay for a convertible. So what do you do? Cut the roof off and put a paper bag on top of it. So it is a difficult thing, though, when you've already agreed with a client. But re what you really want to be doing is saying to them, look, you can have a fudge website where... You're not paying for Elemental Pro, so we, and, but you want to shop. Right, we're going to have WooCommerce. Now we're going to get WooLimentor. Now we're going to get this. Now we're going to get that. And before you know it, your website's got 20, 30, 40 plugins. We were looking at a website last week that had 60, was it 61 or 62? I think it was 61 plugins. 61 plugins, and they had Elemental Pro as well. It made no sense to me. What, what, what are we doing here? No, 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 no. No wonder your website is slow. <laughs> no wonder your website page speed performance is 20%. You got 61 plugins, JavaScript all over the place, right? And so you've got to kind of give them that example. You want a hotel. You want me to build it. You're going to pay me to build it. But I also have to supply the bricks. Uh, uh, uh. Not happening. Ali, Elemental 25 site plan. Um, I don't... Uh, do you know what? Uh, to be honest, Ali, I start to forget what is offered and what isn't offered and all of that, right? Um, 
so yeah i mean um just keep just make sure you double check what you do get and don't get see carapos when it's a basic website for me a basic website elementor elementor pro you might have the duplicate page plugin maybe rank math uh you might have a security plugin you might have a cache and an optimization plugin maybe maybe what's that seven that's it you don't even have to have seven you might have six six or seven that is it okay now it's a woocommerce shop okay you'll have um asset cleanup you're gonna have to have asset cleanup woocommerce woocommerce payments maybe you'll have a woocommerce filter like femify maybe now we're up to 11 that's with a woocommerce shop that's it right you might need something extra like abandoned cart recovery 12 maybe stripe 13 maybe okay maybe but even then uh, well yeah backup plugin good point good point i missed that so maybe 14 you're still below 15 uh vishvas i did one all in one uh, security plugin go go to our youtube channel which you are probably on right now and do a search for security in our youtube channel and i did a video for all in one about uh i think i did it 2 months ago 5 or 6 weeks ago right so a woocommerce website should be below should be below 15 plugins for sure a blog post website or a basic website should be no more than seven, maybe eight. Six, seven, or eight, depending on backups and optimization and shit like that. When I see a basic brochure website, you know the one I just mentioned that was 61? It wasn't a shop. It wasn't an appointment. It wasn't a hotel. It didn't even have complicated blog posts. 61 plugins for a basic website. What the is going on? All right. And, and and it was with Elemental Pro. And I was like, all right, you got essential add-ons. What's that? What are you using that for? You got ultimate, ad not ultimate add-ons, um, premium add-ons. What was that for? What, what are you really using all of that for? Uh, Michael D, Shield Pro. Never, never use that. Is it free? Is it premium? Do you want to tell us a bit more about that? Um, yeah, so Francisco, I did notice that yesterday and I wasn't sure if that was a bug. So I went into, uh, I was looking at my channel and someone else's and the option to sort via, um, so even though you sort via um, uh, latest uploaded or whatever, the order was not new to old or the other way around has anyone spotted that i spotted it but i wasn't sure if that was a bug I wasn't sure if that was a bug okay shield pro and would you say it's intuitive and easy to use uh michael d would you say it's easy to use and set up what's your thoughts on it michael come on michael help me out here <laughs> By the way, everyone, I'm, all, I'm giving you all a two-minute warning, all right? We've been live now for one hour eight. I've been sat here, just come back from the Cairo. I do need to go and just shake myself a little bit, you know. Okay, cheers, Michael. I will have a look at that. I think all pro versions have more capabilities. Hey, if you're not hitting like, you must hit like, please. And please do let your other WordPress friends, family know about the the live chats we do and our channel it really massively helps hey halal how are you uh wayne what would you use for a website that produces data reports from tables of charts graphs and export um that's a good question actually that is a good question um that is a good question, actually. Um, when you say producers data reports, though, 
I can't think of which plugins to use, but there are some that produce good tables and charts and stuff. I mean, um, QI add-ons, I think, does it? I think premium add-ons as well, I think. Hey, Impacto WordPress from Latin America, how are you? By the way, Bo, I am about to go in uh, 30 seconds. You've only got 30 seconds before I shoot off. So for anyone that's just joined, we have been live for nearly one hour, 10 minutes. I do have to go off and do some other stuff. I have other things to do that I really do need to sort out. Uh, but great to have you here. And hopefully, you know, um, you do catch more of the live chats next week. Or you can watch the replay. Please do watch the replay. We have covered off quite a few things today as well. Okay, everyone, I'm going to say goodbye now. I have got stuff I need to do. Take care of yourself. Um, I will be back tomorrow at the normal time of midday GMT. I was late today because I had a chiropractor appointment, but I will be back. What's on everyone's list for Black Friday deals? Well, we're going to have a 40% sale on our mastery module if you go to our website across all our courses. Uh, so please do pop in and see that. Right. I'm going to say goodbye, everyone. Take care. See you all tomorrow. Bye.